welcome to our gather together. We are so pleased and excited to have you with us. We have got loads going on this morning, but we're gonna start with a little game. Ooh. Now we thought we could do something that gets us up, gets us active, gets us moving. Something that I know all the children are probably gonna wanna join in with, and yep. Jeremy's gonna wanna join in with, but I'm hoping that some of you adults might want to join in as well. Come on, grown ups, don't yeah, let me know. Yeah, come on. So the game's pretty simple. Good. I'm gonna sing a song. And there are okay. some actions that you have to do throughout the song. But you only do those actions if you are wearing the item of clothing that I say okay. at the beginning of the song. Okay, so listen out for the item of clothing. Got ya. If you're wearing it, you need to follow the actions. Okay, let's do Jeremy's this. Jeremy's going to show you. Ready? <laughs> Here we go. If you are wearing socks, wearing socks. If you are wearing socks, wearing socks. Stand up tall and turn around. Clap your hands and touch the ground. If you are wearing socks, sit back down. Okay, next one ready? Okay. If you are wearing jeans, wearing jeans. Love my jeans. If you are wearing jeans, wearing jeans. Always wearing jeans. Stand up tall and turn around. Clap your hands and touch the ground. If you are wearing jeans, sit back down. Okay, last one. Oh, I'm exhausted already. Ready? If you are wearing a t-shirt, wearing a t-shirt. If you are wearing a t-shirt, wearing a t-shirt. Stand up tall and turn around. Clap your hands and touch the ground. If you are wearing a t-shirt, sit back down. There we go. Oh. Thanks for joining in with that. Hopefully Ooh. you're a bit warmed up and feeling a bit loose now. I think I need to lie down. <laughs> but there's no time for lie downs because it's now time to head across digitally to the Nixon household for a time of worship. It's going to be led by Paul, Chess, James and Benjamin. Very exciting times. Now, one of the things that's really important to us as a church family, something that marks us out, I think, as a church family, is our belief that God speaks to us during our times of worship. It's not just us singing heavenward, mm. God speaks to us as well. And sometimes the way that happens is through your contributions. Yeah. So whether you've done this lots before in the past or you haven't ever done it, we wanna encourage you, please feel free to contribute. I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean say <laughs> No, <laughs> that's very kind of you to check though. I love that. If God puts something on your heart or on your head, please feel free to share it in the comment thread. And then as a church family, we will be equipped and edified and encouraged. The Hopefully that will make sense. The three E's. Over to you, Nixon household, take it away. Morning, everybody. Hi. Great to be with you. Thanks for joining us here in the Nixon household. You are very welcome Nixon to be with us. Household. The Nixon household. That is this woo, household. Woo, yeah. woo, 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 so we're gonna lead you in some worship. Hopefully you've got the words. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Say 
album quite a bit for the last 12 months or so and uh, and enjoying it um so yeah hopefully you'll pick this up it's pretty straightforward um it's got some great words to it too We are the dreamers, we 
are the ones who carry love into the darkness. We are the fire burning inside, nothing can stop us. We are the young, we are the bold, we are the fearless. We are the strong, we are the brave, we are the demons. We are the ones who carry love into the darkness. to Jess and Bex. Over to you guys. Guys, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, James and Benjamin and Paul and Chess. That was really brilliant. Really enjoyed that. We're going to be heading back to the Nixon household in just a little bit for some more worship. Um, but first of all, we're going to think about what our theme is for this morning. Yes, indeed we are, Rebecca. Today, our theme is grace. It's something we've been exploring a bit more about recently. And interestingly, it's actually the name of our church family. We are called Grace Church Stoke-on-Trent. So not only is it a topic that's really important in the Bible, it's a topic that's really important to us and our lives. We keep using this word grace, yeah. but what does it actually mean? Good question, Rebecca. Mm. Good question. Well, over the last few weeks, some of you have been sharing with us what you think grace means and what it means to you. So sit back, relax, and hear some of these answers to that very big question. What is grace? I need to ask you two a question. What is grace? Can you think? What is grace? Grace Church Day. Grace Church Stoke, so you, that's what you think of. What do you think of when I say grace? Anything? Grace is when we get some things that we don't deserve. Like when Doctor Who saves the bad guys. Grace is God's great love. Jemima, what is grace? If, if you lost something like TV, Mummy and Mummy and Daddy let me watch it. Oh, okay. That's really good. I think Grace is God loving us because he's the best God he is. Grace is one of my friends. Emily, what's what's Grace? Grace. <laughs> 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 Grace means giving us something that we don't deserve. For example, how God died on the cross instead of us. It's time for a Bible story. A long time ago, in a town called Jericho, there lived a man named Zacchaeus. Whoa, what's going on with that name there? Zacchaeus? How is anyone supposed to pronounce that? Uh, like this. Zacchaeus. Zacchachusa. No. Zazachino. What? No, it's like Zach. Just say it after me. Zacchaeus. Zacharaka ding dong. All right, now you're just trying to make it weird. Yeah, I know. So who's this Zach Cheeto guy? What's his deal? Zacchaeus was kind of an interesting guy. First of all, he was famous. Everybody in Jericho knew who he was. Nice, rolling like a big shot. And he was totally rich. I'm talking fancy schmancy clothes, waterfall pool, blinged out toilet seat. He was loaded. Cha-ching, my man, Zach Ebers, living the life. Also, he was super short. Wait, 
Really? That's part of the story? Actually, yeah. What's the problem? Hmm, just seems like you're getting a little personal there. I don't know, maybe jealous about the whole super rich fancy toilet thing? No, it's really part of the story. All right, all right, just saying. So what, is this guy like everyone's favorite person? Um, no, actually, everyone hated him. Whoa, really? Yeah, like everybody. I'm talking men, women, puppies, clowns, little baby squirrels, you name it. They did not like Zacchaeus one bit. Man, what gives? Is Jericho just like a big town full of jerks? No, there was definitely a reason. You see, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Ah, that explains it. He's the tax man. Classic case of the old income removal service, huh? Pretty much. Zacchaeus would go around and collect tax money from all the people in Jericho. But wait, hold on. That's that's not that bad, right? He's just doing his job. Why does everybody hate him so much? Well, he wasn't just doing his job. He was a thief, a liar, a low-down, dirty, good-for-nothing crook. He used his job to steal from people. That's how he got so rich. Zacchaeus had a terrible reputation, and for good reason. He was not a good dude. Ah, now it makes sense. So what happens next? Does everybody, like, beat him up and take back all their money? Nope. Here's what happened. One day, Jesus was traveling around the countryside, teaching and healing people like he would often do, and he happened to pass through Jericho. News spread fast that Jesus was there, and soon a huge crowd gathered to hear him speak. Jesus was kind of a big deal whenever he went places, huh? Oh, yeah. Tons of people came from all around to listen to Jesus, including Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus and hear what he had to say, but there was a problem. The crowd was too big, and Zacchaeus, you know, was just a little fella. Hmm, hashtag short man problems. The struggle is real. So what'd he do? Well, he wanted to see Jesus so badly that he was like, whatever, I don't care, and climbed way up in a tree to see over the crowd. Man, he really wanted to see Jesus. No joke. Here's a grown man all fancy and rich and what night climbing up a tree. He didn't care if people thought he was weird. He just wanted to see Jesus. I mean, probably wasn't that big of a deal. Like, from a distance, people probably just thought it was a kid, you know, because the whole short thing. Well, somebody noticed, and not just anybody. Jesus himself sees this guy climbing a tree to see him, and he stopped talking to the crowd. Everyone went silent as Jesus looked right at Zacchaeus, and the crowd waited on pins and needles to see what Jesus would say. Oh man, this is it. Jesus is about to lay the smack down on Zacchaeus for being a low-down, dirty thief. He's going to be all like, I know what you've been up to, you little nasty. You've been stealing and scheming, and it's time for you to pay. You didn't think you'd ever get caught, huh? Well, guess what? I'm Jesus, and I know everything. So pay up, punk. Ba-boom, mic drop. And the crowd goes wild. (sighs) Uh, No, that's not what happened at all. Jesus stood there, looked Zacchaeus right in the eye, and said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. Let's go to your house and have dinner. Today, I will be your guest. Whoa, forget mic drop, more like jaw drop. You really said that? Yep. Even though he knew Zacchaeus was like a total scumbag? Like, why? Jesus knew that Zacchaeus had done some really bad things and had a lot of sin in his life, but Jesus also knew that Zacchaeus couldn't do anything bad enough to stop him from loving him. He wanted to spend time with Zacchaeus so that he could save him from the sin in his life. Whoa, so what happened next? Well, just like he said, Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house and had dinner with him, which was a huge deal. Before this, nobody hung out with Zacchaeus, and here's Jesus going to his house for dinner as his guest. Mmm, it's like I've always said, there ain't much that a good burger can't fix. You never said that. Well, it's still true. After Zacchaeus spent time with Jesus, his heart was totally changed. He apologized to everyone for what he had done and gave half of his belongings to the poor. Then he paid back all the people he'd stolen from four times what he owed them. Wow, he's like a totally different dude. I mean, still vertically challenged and everything, but on the inside, whoa, he's awesome. His life changed that much just from like spending time with Jesus? Totally. That's the cool thing about this story. It shows us this. Jesus already knows everything about you, all the good, all the bad, everything you've ever done or ever will do. 
But that doesn't stop him from wanting to be close to us. And just like Zacchaeus, the more you get to know Jesus, the more he will change your heart. Dude, that is so cool. The next time I climb a tree, I'm going to think about this story where Jesus changed old Zacchaeus' heart. Well, it's Zacchaeus, but yeah, that's a cool idea. Actually, scratch that. Next time I eat a Cheeto, I'm going to think about it. Because, let's be honest, I'm going to eat a Cheeto way before I'm going to climb a tree. Hashtag snacks for life. Yeah, sounds about right. The end. Can we even get Cheetos in the UK? I don't think we can. I think it's Watsits that we have. But Zaka Watsits doesn't really work. Does it, to be honest, let's just practice saying Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. If you struggle with Zacchaeus and it's a bit of a funny name, then just think of Zach. But don't get confused with our Zach from Grace Church, who's kind and fun that we know and love. This Zach, Zacchaeus, was a real meanie. We've just heard about how he stole money from people, how he just extorted people, and nobody in Jericho liked him at all. But Jesus is kind and compassionate towards him and even asks to go to his house for tea. Can you imagine what that's like? Jesus coming around your house for tea. What would you eat together? I wonder what you'd ask your mum or your dad to make you for tea. This is a great moment, a great example of grace in action. Basically showing someone kindness that they don't deserve. Have you experienced grace before? I'm sure you have. Maybe over lockdown, your nan or your granddad has sent you something as a bit of a treat and you've thought, what have I done to deserve this? And they say, nothing, we just love you so much. That's grace. Behaving like that is called being gracious. And no one is more gracious than God himself. God sent Jesus, yeah, to be gracious to Zacchaeus in moments like we've read, but also to be gracious to the whole world, to show us his kindness and his love and his forgiveness as well. You see, here's the thing, just like Zacchaeus, we've all done wrong things. We've all made bad choices, whether super big things or whether really tiny little things. When we put them all together and we hold them up and compare them to the greatness and the purity and the holiness and the kindness of God, we all find that we need forgiveness. You see, God gave us our lives and he intended that they be good. But every time that we make a bad choice, that we do something wrong, we're going against the the way that God would want us to live. And those things have consequences. First and foremost, we hurt ourselves when we don't follow the plan and purpose and the things that God tells us we should do in the Bible. Secondly, we can hurt others by our actions as well. And thirdly, and most importantly, we're offending God because he's good and pure and wants good things for us. And every time we say, no, we're not going to do it that way, we're rebelling against him. So so what happens next? Well, we're familiar with consequences, aren't we? You know, if someone uh, were to steal a load of money today, then hopefully the police would catch up with them and they'd be thrown in jail, as Eli always says when we're playing at home. You know, if I say something mean or nasty to Jez, he's really kind and compassionate. He'd probably forgive me. Or he might decide he doesn't want to talk to me until I've said sorry. If Amelie doesn't listen to daddy at home, she might have to go on time out. We all have consequences for actions. But the Bible says, God says, that the consequences of all the wrong things that we do, and those those things are called sin in the Bible, that the consequences are so serious that God had to send Jesus to die on the cross for them. In fact, I think it was CJ that said in the video, grace is Jesus dying on the cross in our place so that we don't have to. And that is grace. How amazing is that? That God would send his son to show his love for us so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be friends with God forever. How amazing is that grace? We should name a church after it. And here's the good thing. The best thing about this grace is it's free. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work really hard to to get God to love you. He already does. And whether you are a little person, a medium-sized person, a big or old person watching this today, you need to be reminded, I need to be reminded that God loves us because he loves us. So even when we make more bad choices, his love for us 
isn't going to go away. God is gracious and forgiving. We just need to look to him and say sorry for the things that we do wrong. And I don't know about you, but that kind of changes the way that I want to live. Just like when Zacchaeus encountered the kindness of Jesus and his heart was changed and he decided to treat people in a different way, to give back to people that he'd stolen from, to undo some of the wrongs that he's done in life. I want to do that as well. I want to live a life in such a way that honours, that shows my love and gratitude and thanksgiving to God. But it also makes me want to change the way that I behave towards others as well. Because this week, you're going to be going back to school, so many of you. And adults, whatever the week you might have in front of you, probably at some point, you are going to encounter someone being a little bit mean, maybe a little bit short, maybe a little bit unkind towards you. And here's the challenge for us. Why don't we try and model the grace of God shown to us in what Jesus did here? Even though nobody likes Zacchaeus in the city of Jericho, Jesus showed him compassion and he was changed. I wonder what will happen if we show the grace and love and mercy of God to others that we come into contact this week. Maybe they might be astounded and say, why are you being so kind to me when I've been so mean to you? And then we'll have a great opportunity to talk about Jesus and to celebrate grace together. And maybe they'll even be changed as a result. Let's pray together. God, we want to thank you so much for your kindness and your grace towards us in Jesus. Thank you so much that you love us, not because of what we do, but because you love us and you're a good God. And Lord Jesus, we're sorry for times where we rebel against you, where we don't do things that we ought to, that we don't live in the way that you've instructed us to. Help us to change. Help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to live lives that celebrate your grace more and more and help us to be gracious towards others, whether it's a brother or a sister, a friend, whether it's our parents or someone else this week that we're going to encounter. Lord, would you help us by your spirit to show your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're back. You want some more? I remember, it's not about us doing more, is it? It's about oh, it's performing. It's God giving us. Well, God gives us more, but also we give to God, don't we? That's what we do. We're worshipping. Giving to God is God gives to us. That's it's right. complicated. <laughs> well, actually, it's quite straightforward, but I can understand how you might think it's complicated sometimes. Yeah. It means the same thing. It sounds the same. Well, a bit like at Christmas, I give you a present, you give me one. Yeah, it sounds the same. Thank you, Stu, when I give you a chocolate and you give me a chocolate. Something like that. Anyway, let's not get carried away. <laughs> right, we know this one now. This one is... Rah! <laughs> What's this one called, Benj? Lion and Lamb, I told you.
stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. No one. No one. No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. going to hear them now. I'm sticking with the piano for now before you start pressing buttons. Um, yeah, thank you. What did you, you were going to say something, weren't you, about people commenting? Oh, yeah. Um, if, if, you want, if you want to comment, then that's okay if God's speaking to you, or if you just want to keep saying hi for if anyone joins, but the main reason that we have contributing is to speak to God. But if any of you don't want to contribute, then that's okay and we'll only get it, but it would be nice if you did. Okay, <laughs> thanks James. Yeah, great reminder. Use the uh, comment box to um, to share your thoughts on what you think God is saying to you at the moment. We'd love to hear that. Uh, right, let's sing our final song then. What song are we doing now? What What's this one called, Benj? Thing. Great Things. That's Great right. Things! And I don't think you've noticed, but... Okay, yeah, there's a dinosaur on your t-shirt. Let's move on. I'm like Jesus, I say. 
Passing back to uh, Jasmine Bex, I think. This morning, I'm really excited because for our Life in Lockdown edition, I am joined by a group of wonderful people, lots of our young people and children from Grace Church. Good morning, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you Hi. doing? Good. <laughs> Great. Good. It's so lovely to see all your vo- uh, see all your voices, see all your faces, and hear all your lovely voices. So I want to know what's it like for a young person and a child in lockdown. Eva and Maya, tell us what has been some of the best things about being in lockdown. Well, I mean, it's it's been like a whole learning experience altogether, and obviously you can't um, you couldn't see people, and that that was sad. But yeah. um, you kind of got to kind of take a minute and relax for um, a bit, even though it wasn't all that relaxing. But <laughs> no, there was times when you just had to chill out because there was nowhere else to go, and nothing else to do, right? So you could just yeah. have a bit of time to chill out. Yeah, definitely, Maya. One of the best things, um, well, it kind of depends because I feel like going to school this time is different, but it's also better yeah. because there's like less of us and we can do like kind of like more things. Yeah, definitely. What about you, James and Benjamin? What have been the best things about lockdown? Can you think of any? Learning to ride our bikes. <gasps> one of the best things I can say we've been trying to see who's the fastest on bikes and who can learn the cleverest trick and I can hold, I can drive it with one hand no what that's super smart and super brave like a superhero and one of the worst things would have been uh, not being able to See friends and family. Lydia and Jacob, what about you? Can you think of anything that's been good about lockdown? I think it's really learning games because we've learned a lot of games in lockdown. Have you? What's been your favourite game that you've played at home? Do you remember any? Is it a board game? Forbidden Island. Forbidden Island. Is that a board game? Yeah. Where the piece parts of the boards can sing. I might have to have a look at that one. And Annie, what about you? What's been the best thing that's happened? The best thing that's happened is going to grandma's. Yes, that's been good, hasn't it? Because you've been in a bubble with your grandma, haven't you? So you've been able to go to her house and she's been able to come to yours. That's been fantastic, hasn't it? Maisie, what's been your best thing about being at home and staying at home? Well, I could be on my own and have some time off so you got to have some time off school well no because what about homework 
Oh, yeah, we yeah. have to do homework. Homework is the thing I hate, but going to school, I just love it. You love going to school, but you haven't enjoyed doing your schoolwork at home. What about you, Jakey and Lydia? What's been hard about staying at home? Has it been your schoolwork or missing your friends? What's been really hard? Being bored. Oh, yeah. Who else, Louise? Have you been bored? Yeah. Nothing to do. Nothing to do. Mine's my home learning. One of my lessons is an hour and 18 minutes long. What? Just, just the video, though. So then I have to do, like, another 10 minutes of typing everything out. Oh, my goodness. So you've been worked hard then. Have you done lots of hard work, James and Benjamin? Yes. What's been the hardest work that you've had from school? What's been the trickiest thing that your teachers asked you to do? Putting speech into speech bubbles. Annie, what about you? What's been the hardest thing about lockdown? Not, not be, being able to see other friends. Yeah, definitely. Eva and Maya, have you got a toughest bit? Has it been really challenging? Well, um, it was um, challenging before. I think going to school now has made it a lot easier because at home you don't really have the motivation and there's a lot of distractions. Yeah. And when we had a snow day a couple of weeks ago, I found I found it really hard to concentrate and I hardly did any of my work for that day. Yeah, very Basically hard. Learning. Yeah, working from home, you have to have a real kind of motivated mind and be concentrating it's very difficult isn't it so in the first lockdown then you guys stayed at home but in yeah. this lockdown you've been back at school with the few children that have been going have you yeah yeah what's been hard for you Maya um I would say missing devoted because that was really sad definitely yeah. have the rest of you thought about the fact that you've missed devoted yeah yeah mm. Pretty tough, huh? So what about the big one then, guys? Do you know who has recently said that all the children can go back to school? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what his name is? Yeah. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. Who's Boris Johnson, Benjamin? Do you know? The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister making all the rules to keep us all safe, isn't he? And he said, it's time for the children to go back to school. How are you feeling about going back? I think you all look quite excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's great news that you're all excited about going back to school. Is it because you get uh, to go on the playground and play with all your friends? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm excited and worried. Who's worried? Jacob, you're worried. Yeah, because I don't know what it's going to be like. Because it's, it's still going to be different. Yes. It's not going to be the same as before COVID was even around. You're right, Jacob. I think you will not be the only child and the only teacher who might be feeling a little bit worried about going back to school. <laughs> And I think that'll be something that I can pray about in a minute to say, please God, help us if we're feeling a bit worried about going back to school. Because you're right, it might be a bit different. Annie, what's the best thing for you about going back to school? Um, seeing all my friends. Yes, definitely. What about, are any of you excited about seeing your teachers? Yeah, definitely. I am. You are, Maisie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to be seeing Miss Ashley. Yeah, so excited. I mean, you've seen them on the screen like this, haven't you? But it's not the same as seeing them in real life, is it, James? Mm, not at all the same. It's, it's even difficult for the teachers. It is difficult. And you know that, don't you? Because you've got someone in your house who works in the school, don't you? I feel like she might be sat just there. Well, guys, I'm so pleased that you've joined me. Is there anybody that wants to say anything else that they've not had a chance to say? I do. The good thing about lockdown is probably both. I do. Hang on a minute, Maisie. The, say that again, Lydia. The good thing about lockdown is that I can read a ton of books every day. 
This is true. Yeah. Reading is brilliant. What's your favourite book that you're reading at the moment, Lydia? Probably a non-fiction book. Non-fiction. Ooh, that's good. Understanding lots of things about the real world if you're reading non-fiction. Maisie, what did you want to say? I want to say what's hard for me when I, because of coronavirus, I just get bored of playing on my own. Yeah, you want to go back to play with all your friends, don't you, and see all your mm -hmm. friends at school and church? I know. And James, did you have something you wanted to say? The cool thing about lockdown is the <clears throat> we get to have pajama days. Mm. Who else loves a pajama day? Hands up. <laughs> Unanimous. Everyone loves a pajama day. And Benjamin, did you have something you wanted to say? I like drawing pictures. Drawing pictures. Yeah, drawing's a good way to fill your time if you're feeling a bit bored as well, isn't it? Well, it looks like we've lost Maisie. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to pray for you guys now and all the other children at Grace Church and all your brothers and sisters and all your cousins and all your friends at school because all the grown-ups are so proud of all of you children and all of you young people because it has been so hard none of us had to have any of this happen when we were your age and you've all done so well being at home and school being so different we are so proud of you so well done and hopefully in the next few months life will begin to look a little bit more like we remember it looking so I'm going to pray for you. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If you want, you can close your eyes. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's fine. Father, I thank you for all these wonderful children and young people. I thank you that they are a huge blessing to our church family. We love the young people and the children at Grace Church. And we just ask that you would uh, draw near to them. Father, we ask that they would know you in a real, real way. And that as they head back to school this week, whether that's um, back to school because they haven't been there or, or back to school with, with normal amounts of students being there and it all kind of going back to everyone being back, Father God, I just pray that you would um, help them not to feel worried, that they would know that you're with them, that you would give them peace, that you would make them really excited about all the good things that school are gonna, is going to bring. They're going to get to see their friends and their teachers and play in the playground and do their art lessons and all the things that they can't do at home. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Well, everybody else go, go. in the church, um, kids and grown-ups, remember to keep checking in, find out how people are doing and do your own life in lockdown catch-up. Oh, guys, thank you so much for getting involved and sharing with us what you have been up to during lockdown, life in lockdown. We're just welcoming Bex back into the studio. Uh, you've got... You weren't wearing it a moment ago don't with the kids. Don't draw attention. You've got it's dressed. It's supposed to be live. It's, of course it's live. It's, it's all live. absolutely live. It's but live. why did you get dressed? Everything's live. Because, you know. Such a diva. <laughs> costume changes. Massive thank you also to you if you uh, took part in explaining what you thought Grace meant to you. That was really, really great. Uh, and of course, hearing from Dave was fantastic too. Absolutely, it's been a fantastic morning. Really great to hear the story of Zacchaeus. And like Jeremy says, to hear and learn more about what grace means for us. And that is it, we are finished, but we are gonna invite you guys to come and join us on Zoom for communion. If you're a church member, then Dave will have sent you out the Zoom link. So quickly grab those details, grab what you need for communion and join us in just a moment on Zoom so we can worship together through communion. Bye guys, have a great day. We're gonna quickly get dressed again. Into, yeah. into some new clothes. New costume change new costume for change. communion. Yeah. yeah. See you very soon. Mm -hmm.